who I thought we really, after the break, came out and played extremely well. Um, we had talked all week about the potential of a weather break and that we would have to do whatever it took to go into the locker room, come back out, go into the locker room, come back out. We actually talked about it and um, you know, we did materialize, so you know, it wasn't a shock for our guys. And you know, we, we, we went in and told them that we were going to try and stay here all night if we had to win this game. It was really that important to us. Uh, I thought when we came out, uh, we just uh, dominated the game. Uh, I think they, we, we, we hadn't hunted in the first half at all. And I, I think we wore them down as well, uh, from what I could see. Um, John had a great game. Uh, in spite of his hand, and uh, you know, Poppy played well. Our defense was tremendous. Uh, they really stymied their offense. Their quarterback is a terrific player. He beat us last year. Very good. Uh, we were ready for him this year, and he was slowed a little bit with his knee. He had a brace on his knee, so I think he was uh, wasn't exactly what he was the year before. Uh, but our defense was very determined. Run stopping defense was, was really excellent. Question for the players? What's up with the hand? Uh, I don't know yet. Yeah, I think it's just a bruise, though. Bad bruise. But... When, did, when did it happen? Did it kind of uh, I put my hand on the ground and got pushed. And I, I guess, like, just how I held on to it. And then when you stayed in the game, it was closer? Uh, yeah, no, it never bothered me. I played, I, I played the whole game with it, so oh. it didn't affect me. Injury happened in the first quarter. Yeah. You know, Pat, Coach was alluded to the fact that you guys were kind of mentally prepared for that potential weather break. But when it actually happens, how do you kind of keep your focus? Uh, basically, like, I'm a, you know, senior leader. Right. So when stuff like that happens, you know, Coach just has us uh, rally around the guys. We stay up tempo. Um, we went into practice knowing that we were going to face situations like this, so we knew exactly how to handle it through our walkthroughs, through our practices. You know, just like just to stay focused because this was a great opponent. Fordham's a good team; they're not a bad team. I just felt like for us to be ready for this situation, we knew exactly how to handle it. You know, I mean, you come out and get a sack on the first play after the break. Were you guys looking to kind of send it? You know, so fourth and six or whatever. Were you guys looking to kind of send a message and maybe set a tone for the rest of the game? We exactly wanted to set a tone for uh, the rest of the game. Um, you know, in uh, last year against Fordham, we came out real flat, and that's how we lost the game in the second half. Uh, we put, you know, two halves together, and with that sack, you know, it really set the tone for not only the defense but the team in general. Are you guys a little better in a, with a three-man front, do you think? Is it, is it, does it suit your... This, the personnel of this team may be a little bit better than, than a four-man look? Uh, you know, last year, four-man, uh, between last year, four-man, and uh, this year's three-man front, it's really not the front and personnel. It's just the defense playing together this year. I feel like uh, what stands out about us is that we're n nobody on our uh, side of the ball is All-American, All-CAA. We're just focused on one goal, and that's to win. Our motto is togetherness, and that's how we play. What is it about this defense? Uh, you know, last year you go toe to toe with Syracuse, and this today you just absolutely shut down the running game. Obviously, that was the game plan to take away the run and force them to pass. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, our game plan always coming in is to stop the run and you know uh, not let them run it. And uh, you know we'll give up the five yard passes and stuff. We'll give up the short stuff, uh, sacrifice in order to stop the run. So, but I think just the biggest thing from this year, last year to this year, is just. The togetherness, just like Pat was alluding to, you know, we're really together and we're a tight group, and we have the mantra of togetherness, and we have the mantra of Blitzkrieg, which is just fast lightning warfare. So we just try to play as fast as we can and not let any team set the tempo. We want to set the tempo and have them try to match it. How much of an advantage to have an offense that keeps you guys off the field and helps helps you stay fresh? Yeah, I mean, they've been great the past two games. I mean, I don't think they had zero turnovers in the past two games. They've been incredible at 
Uh, they didn't get a rest, but as you know, a lot of guys on the defense play special teams. So I think Jay Cox, our strength trainer, has done a tremendous job just making sure that we're all ready for the games, getting us prepared, and that's uh, really showed. And John, another team that threw eight, nine, sometimes ten guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. You seem to, you know, come out throwing a little bit more. Was that by design, or were those audibles into what the defense was giving you? Uh, I mean, no, we knew they were going to try and do that. Uh, I watched game film on last year's game plenty of times, and I didn't want to because we didn't play very well, but, you know, we had to. So we knew what we were coming into, and they did that last year, and I didn't throw as well as I should have. And that's why a big reason why we lost. They had a lot of guys in the box, and we were just still running the ball, and I wasn't getting it out there where I should have. But, uh, yeah, like if, ever, if they're going to stack the box, we got to be able to throw on them. And I think that the receivers and the offensive line this year are ready to get open and everything. And I feel like my passing game is getting better every time. Yeah, you got, this is a young offensive line. You a lot of new guys up there, and they're giving you time to throw. Yeah, they're really coming together. And uh, I feel like they just – first game, you know, it's – get that out of the way. We had two guys who have never played before, started at least. And, uh, you know, we're really trying to bring them together. And you know, veterans like Ross Hall and Vince Kowalski, they're really just like helping out and always talking on the line. I hear them during the game telling them what to do and stuff to make sure. And I think that's really good. you think the defense is going to start getting some recognition now after these, these last two performances? Uh, I hope so. I mean, they, they're helping us out a lot. I always tell Donald, like, just give me the ball and Pat, I tell him. And they're like, all right, I will. And, they, you know, they really have been. They've been getting us the ball in great field position as well. Well, you know, we're, we're hoping that our defense was, was going to be better on third down. Uh, we, we weren't really good on third down last year. And um, it was something that was really uh, emphasized this year. We need to get off the field on third down. And sometimes turnovers uh, are, part of, are part of the deal. So, um, you know, I was happy to see us play as aggressive as we did. Is that, is that the scheme? Is that just the personnel? Because you do seem to be a much more aggressive defense this year, Andy. Than well, you were I think we went, back, we went back to the three-man line, which is really what we, we've been. I think we experimented a little too, too much with the 4-3 last year, and I think it hurt us. I think we we're, were better at playing the 30 defense, and some of the blitzes we've been able to get into, and helps us disguise coverage a little bit in the secondary as well. You know, we certainly give up some some areas in the passing game, but you never really know sometimes from an offensive standpoint what area it is. So I think the schemes really, you know, helped us get back to, you know, playing really aggressive defense. What's it like to have a guy like Joe Trainer back in this there? I mean, he's not the D.C., Billy's in D.C., but, you know, Joe's been a head coach, defensive coordinator, and he brings a lot of valuable experience to, to a defensive unit. Yeah, it's really a very uh, good comfort zone with Joe. Uh, he's a tremendous coach and a steady influence on Billy. Uh, Crocker, he and Billy you know, grew up together. And Billy was his GA, really. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when you have a guy with that kind of wisdom and knowledge on defense, it, it's, it's really, really helpful. And uh, giving Joe the special teams, you know, I think coming from being a head coach for eight years and now all of a sudden back to being an assistant, but he runs all our special teams and is very active with our whole team every single day. He has every kid in special teams meetings. So it's a big plus to have him here. I hope he stays for a while. Are you worried about John's left hand? Yeah, I'm worried. Um, you, you know, I mean, we've got to get, get x-rays and we've got to, you know, really figure out what the hand specialist is going to say. Um, it's the good thing is it's not his throwing hand. So um, I mean, I was I thought he played great with his hand pretty well taped up the way it was. I mean, he actually played excellent football. So it looks like whenever we scheme up, he can he can play with it. It's just you know not as comfortable as it was. Yeah, kicking game. You're worried about Stevie Weiler, freshman coming in. He struggled a little bit, but Chris seemed to be pretty solid for you today. Is he back to being your kicker? Is that something that you, yeah, you, you know, have we, to readdress? We, we um, you know, I just really figured, and I really needed to see Weiler play. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're missing two field goals or two extra points, 
he's telling you because he's really not ready for prime time. Um, you know, I talked to him at the end of the first half and just said, look, you, you know, you just got to keep working on your technique and the mental aspect of the game. And, you know, we, we were looking for a pickup with Chris, certainly at least being able to kick extra points. Uh, and then we gave him a shot at the long field goal, which was great for him uh, and his psyche. So um, Steve's, Steve's going to be a good kicker for us. He's just not ready yet. You know, he's just not ready. Um, but I needed to find that out, you know, especially after, you know, after last week, we were two for four against Syracuse, and the winning field goal, we could have a great win under our belt. So I really wanted to, to see if Steve was, you know, the answer, and I was worried because it might have cost us in a, in a game like this because I didn't expect that we put 50 points on these guys. Um, I really, I really, uh, I really felt like, wow, you know, we, we lost five points that we could have had on the board, and it could be that uh, that close of a game, but we took them out of their game. Is that why you brought Chris in for that long field? You, you maybe to give him a little confidence boost and just yeah. see what he what he well, did? Because he, a lot of people might question, why are you kicking a 40-something yard field goal when you're up 40 to six? Yeah. Well, it was fourth down yeah. as well. So, I mean, why would I go for it when I'm up? Right by that as well. And it was certainly you know, a kicking situation and a chance to see if he could get his mind back into to the game and so on. So our kicking game uh, right now with our kicker, our punter is very solid. But uh, our kickoff, Chris kicked one out of bounds. And um, come on, man, don't put it on 35 now. But you know, we're, we're still a work in progress there. How, how surprised are you with the outcome? I mean, this is a team that Beat you last year, yeah. you know, and, and went to the playoffs, and, and, and you were half, half a hundred. Yeah, I, I still don't know. Um, I think I think we're pretty good. Right. I mean, coming off, coming off the uh, Syracuse game, you could say, well, maybe Syracuse will pass us. I doubt it. Um, you could say we played a great game, and maybe we couldn't re reproduce that. Or you could say. We're really good, um, and I, I guess I still don't know that because I expected Fordham to be. I mean, they've been in the scholarship business now for six years, so I thought they were an upper level CAA team. Um, didn't look like it, uh, you know, with the result of the game. So I think the book is still out on us right now. Um, I do know that our defense is better. And we're still breaking in a couple of offensive linemen, and we've got to really secure the extra point for the thing for, for sure, because we're going to be in some wars in our league. As a, as a coach, did you say anything in particular to the players during the break to keep them mentally sharp? Or No, uh, other than we had talked about it, and I told them that this situation could happen, and that now it has happened, you know, it's really important for us to come out and seize the moment. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it wasn't a shock to us that we could potentially be in two, uh, two timeouts where the game might go into 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night, and we just have to persevere. So they were ready for that, and we're in great shape. Our team's in great shape. Uh, you can see that they tired, last week Syracuse tired against us. Our strength coach, Jay Cox, is doing a great job for us.